Hi, and welcome back to Programming with Pax. In today's video, we are going to take a look at five of the ways of looping through things in JavaScript. We will look at for loops, for in, for of, for each, and finally, while loops. Let's get started. All right, so what are loops used for? Say you have some code, like this console log. It works, OK? But what do we do if we want this bit of code to repeat three times? We could copy and paste it, but that would mean repeating code unnecessarily, which is a big no-no. And we don't have much control over how things are repeated. This is where loops in JavaScript come into action. Loops allow us to run a bit of code many times based on a condition that we set. Let's start with a for loop. In order to write a for loop, we use the keyword for, we open up parentheses, and inside of the parentheses, there are three different components, three different things that we can add in here. Let's write them out, and then let's go over them in greater detail. So first we have initialization for variables. Often we will say let i equals zero. i here is short for index. We then add a semicolon. And then the next section is the condition. So let's say i is less than three. And then we add another semicolon. And then here we have the final expression. So here we will add i plus plus. And then let's add some curly brackets. So this is the general anatomy for a for loop. So this first section is the initialization. The variable that we create here often acts as a counter. The second section is the condition. This condition is evaluated before each loop. So if this expression is true, the code inside the for loop is executed. And if it's false, it stops. Finally, we have the final expression. This is an expression that is executed at the end of each loop iteration. This is often used to increment the counter variable, and you'll often see i++. The plus plus is a shorthand for add one. So we are saying add one to the index variable. Now within the curly brackets, this is where we add whatever logic or code that we're wanting to repeat. So let's write console.log, hello. And let's also add the index. Let's save. And you can see we have hello written three times and zero, one, two. So what happens here is this i is equal to zero at the start. So we could say zero here. And so is zero less than three? Yes, it is. So we run this code. And then at the end, in the final expression, we plus plus it. So this then makes it one. Is one less than three? Yes, perfect, print it again. And then plus plus is two less than three? Yes, plus plus, which is how we get three of them. And then finally, this plus plus would make it three. Is three less than three? No, it is not. And so this is not printed a fourth time. Now I'm going to add an array here with some dummy data for us to work with. Now, if we wanted to loop over this user's array and do something with it, then we don't want to have a fixed number like three here. We want to have something like the length of the user's array. So we can do users.length. Now, if we were to add to the user's array, then the for loop will dynamically adjust and it will loop over this user's array the correct amount of times. Now within the for loop, we have access to this i variable, which is the current index of this users array that we're looping through. So we can say users, and then we can open up square brackets for bracket notation, and we can add i here. And if I save, now we will console log the three different elements that are within the array. And if we wanted the user names, we could say dot username and save. And now we get Jimmy, Lenny, and Sammy. Now something else the for loop gives us is the break keyword. The break keyword allows us to get out of the loop early. So I'm going to add a little bit of code here. And what this says is that if the user at that specific index, if the username is equal to Lenny, then console log that Lenny is found and break. Now let's save and we can see that Jimmy is printed and then Lenny found and there's no mention of Sammy. So Jimmy is printed using this console log here. 
And then when it gets to Lenny at the first index, this if statement's condition becomes true, meaning it goes in here, it prints Lenny found, and then it breaks, which stops the for loop from going any further. And so Sammy is never printed. Now setting up a for loop with the variables, the condition, and the final expression, this all just takes a little bit of time. And so there is a streamlined version of it called for of. Just like a for loop, a for of loop starts with the keyword for, and then we open up parentheses, and we create a variable. Let's call it element. And then we add the keyword of, and then the array that we're wanting to loop over. So users. We open up curly brackets, just like before. And let's say console.log element dot. And here we have access to each of the elements, each of these. So let's say element dot username. And let's save. And now we can see Jimmy, Lenny, and Sammy being printed out. So first we create a variable, and then we use the of keyword, and then we add the name of the array that we're wanting to loop over. As JavaScript has evolved, it has added more ways to be able to loop over an array, such as the for each method. So with for each, we write the array that we're wanting to loop over, and we can then add dot for each. We get access to a callback function here, where we get an individual user and then an arrow function. And let's open up the curly brackets. And this is where you would add some code that you would want to run for each of the elements or each of the users. So let's say console.log user. And now we have the three elements listed. Within the parameters of the callback function, there's also some optional parameters, namely the index and the array. So let's console log those and see what happens. All right, so here we're still getting each individual user. We get the index that we're currently on and the full array here. It's worth noting that this for each method will mutate or change the original array. If you'd like to see another video all on these built-in array methods, I will leave a link in the description to a video that I recently made. So with all of these different ways of looping, you may be asking, well, which one should I use? Or why would you use a for loop instead of always using a for each? So the for loop is actually more efficient. In most cases, this efficiency won't be noticeable. However, it's good to know about. You can also get out of a for loop with the break keyword that we saw, where with the for each method, you are stuck in doing a complete loop through. In general, I use the for each method over loops as it has less setup and is generally easier to read and maintain. All right, so far, everything that we've been working with is for arrays. But what if you have an object that you're wanting to loop over? Well, this is where the for in loop comes into play. So just like before, we start it with the for keyword. We open up some parentheses. We initialize a variable, so let's say const property name, and this property name can be whatever you want it to be. Then we have the in keyword, and then there is the object that we're wanting to loop over. So again, we initialize a variable, we have the in keyword, and then we have what we're wanting to loop over. Within here, let's add a console log, and let's do backticks and some string interpolation, which allows us to use variables right in a string. So let's say property name, let's add a colon, and then here again, string interpolation, and let's do some object, and open up square brackets, and let's do property name, and save. And now we can see that all of the key and values of this object are printed out. All right, finally, we have the while loop. So to get this going, let's add a variable that we can iterate over. So let's say count is equal to zero. And instead of the for keyword, we use the while keyword here. And we open up parentheses, just like before, where we have a condition. So let's say count uh, is less than five. Open up curly braces, and let's add a console log saying inside the while. And underneath that, we need to increase the count. So let's say count plus plus. Let's save. And now we can see that the console log inside the while 
is printed five times. So again, we have the while keyword, then we have a condition, and then we have the code that we want to run. And finally, we need to increment the count. If we don't increase the count here, then what would happen is this while loop would just continue forever and the browser would actually crash. All right, so that covers looping in JavaScript. If you have any questions at all, just let me know in the comments section down below and I will get back to you as soon as possible. If you found this video helpful, I would greatly appreciate it if you dropped a like as it really helps this channel out. This video is part of a series that I'm releasing on the fundamentals of JavaScript. So if you would like to see more videos just like this, then be sure to subscribe. On that note, thank you very much for your time. I hope you're having a great day and I will see you in the next one.